Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life, and I'm coming to you today with another book preview from Tan Books. Remember they sent us that box of books for me to review for you? Um, and I thought I'd pull out one that's a little different. It was not the one on the top, I admit it. I thought, you know, I'd just done the uh, walkthrough of the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I'm also doing our Wild Calling, which is an environmental book, and I wanted to do something completely different for you. Um, and this was the second book in the stack, Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching, How Theology of the Body and Other Church Writings Can Transform Your Life, and it's by John Aquilaviva? Um, let's dive in here. I've never seen this book except on, on the website and I'm kind of excited. Okay, walk through first. Let's look at the back. Okay, we'll read the back. Cloaked in the promises of freedom and empowerment, a war has threatened the lives of millions of people of all ages, but especially the young. This is the body image war. Hollywood, the music industry, and large corporations promise happiness uh, pleasure, popularity, and power if we would just buy what they are selling. But their tactics are smoke and mirrors and their promises are hollow. From Photoshop to misleading advertising to the use of paid celebrities, a cocktail of lies tell us how we are supposed to look and feel about ourselves. And so many of us have bought in, leading to catastrophic results. Eating disorders, body obsession, plastic surgery, steroids, peer pressure, and depression. How do we combat this onslaught? The answer is to turn to God and the teachings of his church. In Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching, Dr. John Aquaviva shows us how we've allowed everyone but God to determine the value of our bodies and how this must change. Relying on such works as Theology of the Body, Holy Scripture, the Catechism, and others, as well as his own history as a college professor of exercise science, Dr. Aquaviva explores the troublesome world of body image in the 21st century and leads 20 body image activities, including a body image survey to see how you view your own body, an exploration of Photoshop and how it distorts our ideals. I'm gonna insert here also filters, right? Especially in this time of Zoom and social media, it's not just Photoshop. There are filters for everything now. And it's part of why I try not to really I don't wear makeup, I don't use filters, I'm real people, this is how I am. Um, yeah, I look a little fancy today, it's kind of ironic, I ended up grabbing this book. I was actually, you know I was wearing a sweatshirt. The shirt underneath is sleeveless, and so I didn't want to come to you in a sleeveless shirt to do a video, and <coughs> this was sitting here. <laughs> this is actually what I wore my profession over my dress. So it was sitting around, and so I grabbed that and put it on. I'm not looking fancy because I'm trying to sell you something. Well, maybe this video. Okay. Um, discussion questions on the Bible and how we are made in God's image and likeness. An examination of Hollywood movies and celebrities. A review of your wardrobe that will help you be content with your body type. You know, and, and for a while I was promoting the Dressing with Dignity book by Colleen Hammond because I thought that that was going to come from that. And... What I found was, okay, she really helped me develop a capsule wardrobe, really shrink the amount of clothes I need down, right? And she did kind of give me some tips and tricks for my body type, and I am super thankful for that. That's really what I got out of that. Now when I'm going shopping, I'm like, I need a dress that is one of these three colors. It needs to be this shape. It needs to be this material. And I go in and if they don't have it, I turn around and go out. I'm not wasting my time browsing. If you waste your time browsing, friends, you're probably going to be lured in by some kind of sale or a picture of a skinny person wearing it. Or, you know, those mannequins. When they put the clothes on the mannequins, oftentimes they pin them and alter the clothes so that they fit the mannequin differently. They're going to fit you. What? So don't, don't go shopping like that. That's like going grocery shopping when you're hungry. Don't do it. Go in knowing what you're going in shopping for specifically and get it. And I really did get that from Colleen Hammond. That is such a gift. But I started trying to be a little fancier than I was. And it wasn't really me. And it wasn't practical. Like if I jump out and try and do yard work in this, this is honestly from a store that it's not quality material. And so if, 
it's great for wearing into church, but if I try and wear it when I'm doing yard work or housework, it's going to be destroyed in no time. It's not practical for me. Um, I am normally, you may not see that, I am normally in a denim skirt and honestly a, a decent top, but something that's plain, like this is plain blue today, because I can instantly change take that sweatshirt off and put something nice on. So I tend to wear a plain shirt that I can add a scarf, a sweater, you know, something fancy over it. But I'm generally going to be wearing a sweatshirt or a jacket over it, honestly, to protect me because I'm like allergic to everything and I'm always getting into mud. I have pets. So I don't want, I don't want to be messy all the time. So if I'm going to leave the house, sweatshirt comes off, something nice goes on and I look good. Um, so what I wanted to say there is, as I did get that from Colleen Hammond, but I have found recently doing the wool and 100 day dress challenge where I wore a, one solid color dress with different, um, different scarves and sweaters and shirts over. That was a really fun 100 days of exploration and I can really start paring down my wardrobe. I think I'm thinning out a lot of those t-shirts with sayings on it that I really developed when I was working more with teenagers. I kept wearing those shirts more because that's more appropriate for working with that age group. Um, you know, it's like a conversation starter t-shirt. I don't really need those. I don't need the 500 vacation Bible camp shirts that I had. I don't need those anymore. So I'm starting to wean those out slowly and pick like the best of every category. So I still have one. So I'm still reviewing my wardrobe a review of your wardrobe that will help you be content with your body type. So that is one of the exercises in here. I'm going to go on with the cover. Help yourself and those you love escape the trappings of a culture obsessed with body image so that you can come to see your true worth of the human body and the dignity God has bestowed on this temple of his presence. Dr. John Aquaviva is a professor of exercise science at Wingate University in North Carolina and the author of Raising Kids with a Healthy Body Image, a Guide for Catholic Parents. He's an active member of the Catholic Speakers Association and a radio show host, Faith and Sport, on an EWTN affiliate in Charlotte, North Carolina, and is regularly asked to be a guest on national radio shows to promote topics surrounding health and fitness in the context of the Catholic faith. And this is considered a religion self-help book. Of course, it's from Tan Books, because that's who gave it to us. Um... Okay, the cover is also one of those soft velvety covers that I love. I do love holding them. I don't know what that is, but I am very, I found them very uh, drawn by texture. Jumping in. Oh, it's just a small little improving your body image. And then they, I think they're just really enforcing that. I, I love that. I love how it's there in case you were wondering. Simple page. And then, you know, the full, full page there. Let's see what's next. Copyright is 2019. Um, it tells you they do use the catechism from 1994. Scriptures, unless otherwise, no, unless otherwise noted, are from Revised Standard Version of the Bible, Second Catholic Edition, which many of us call the Ignatius Bible. Um, that's it. Contents, a little small there. A little small. Especially this guy in italics. Woo, those are a little small. So what kind of things are in here? Four word, how to use this book and a preface. Very interesting that there's a how to use this book. So we'll get to that in a second. Part one is introduction. Part two says welcome to part two. <laughs> okay, so maybe this book is not the most serious book out there. It's a very serious topic, but I think it's taking itself a little bit lately. I like that welcome to part. Oh my goodness. Okay, so part one is the introduction has, in the beginning, God created body image. Did Eve think she was too fat? <laughs> Would Adam have taken steroids? Why the hysteria? Calming the storm, how our faith heals us. What is healthy? Okay, my body's not perfect. Now what? <laughs> part two. Positive and negative body image. Oh, these are all the activities. Activity two, the catechism and the body image. Three, the book of Genesis where body image began. Body image survey. So we're not even doing the survey right away, friends. Nope. 
panic. There's going to be a lot till we get to there. Um, there are two activities on the power of Photoshop. We're just different. Sticks and stones, body art, the Bible and the body, physical activity, sports and body image, word association, Catholic aerobics, <laughs> the body and Sunday mass, clothes and feelings, Snow White and Superman, the comparison game, reality TV, what's healthy, myth or truth, and then a summary activity, what have we learned? I'm loving this, friends. I don't know about you. I am totally drawn in. I'm going to have to, going to have to jump into that. Now, as small as this print was, can I fold it? Look how much bigger the print in the actual book is. Okay, so it's much easier to read when you get in the book. My advice then is if you're old and have bad eyesight, or just have bad eyesight, you may want to get a bookmark. <laughs> so you don't have to go back to that table of contents a lot. Uh, the foreword is actually by Teresa Tamio. If you're friends with Women of Grace at all, you've heard of Teresa Tamio, so I'm very much impressed. Um, she's saying that, yeah, much of her work is actually dedicated to engaging the culture and has been in the media for 32 years, the majority of that time working on air in the secular press. Have it, after having a strong reversion to my Catholic faith, I began to notice how the industry that I had idolized for so long was doing much more harm than good. It wasn't just the sensationalism, the if it bleeds, it leads approach to news was becoming more and more commonplace. So she's coming at it from someone who has worked in the media, looking at the media and body image. That is very, very nice. And she says, John's book strikes not just a professional chord with me, but extremely personal one as well. And so she's going to share a little bit of her story. How to use this book. This is on page XI, so page 11, but Roman numerals 11. Before diving into this book, it's important to understand its structure and how it came to be. The book is divided into two major parts. Part one is a standalone book that I wrote in 2014 and self-published. Years later, it garnered the attention of the good people at St. Benedict Press and Tan Books. I didn't know that was there, friends. I'm cold reading this to you. Who agreed to publish it? But in the years between its original self-publication and it falling into their lap, I developed a series of short activities that reinforced the lessons in the book by inviting the reader or readers to take a more active approach to the content. Actives like body image surveys, word association games, discussion questions, personal reflections, pop culture critiques, and more. This host of activity makes up part two. With the help of my publisher, we combine these two parts into the book you presently hold. The entire book, both parts, can be used for individuals and groups. So if you had that question, friends, right there, individuals and groups. If an individual, he or she can simply read part one and then reflect on the activities alone in part two. However, I recommend this book for groups. The activities at the end are best utilized and will have the most impact if they are combined with fruitful discussion with a group of peers. Recommended group sizes are five to 15, but any size is fine. I totally get the five to 15. Even if you have 15, you may want to break regularly into small groups of five and have that circle of trust. It is weird that we say this, but instead of saying it's the confessional rule, people often call it the, what, the Vegas rule? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Let's call it the confessional rule from now on, Catholics. Let's, let's try it. The confessional rule, what is said in this group stays in this group. Let's call it the confessional rule. Um, yeah, you're going to get a lot from small groups, but you really need to get to know the people. So I would say a massive group size of 15, but trying to break into small groups of five for the activities. It may be helpful to split into groups according to gender, considering the sen sensitivity surrounding the issues of body image. That is true as well. As far as age, this book and all the activities are generally meant for young people, so groups could be paired up according to age. But as we will soon see, people of all ages can suffer from poor body image. So older adults are welcome to form groups as well. More specific information on how to run a group session can be found at the start of part two. That explains that we'll go to part two part probably. If you are doing this in a group setting, it's recommended that each participant attains the books a few weeks before the session is set to meet. Now that note seems simple, but it is very important. We've all been in Bible studies where you, 
either the church provides the book and you pick it up at the first meeting, or um, they may take an order form, right? If you want to join the group, let us know and we'll order the books at a discount. Normally your church can order books, you know, in bulk at a discount. There's only 15 of you. I'm not sure how much of a discount you're going to get, but you could contact TAN Books for that. Um, but they are saying the most important thing is to make sure everybody has their book several weeks in advance. So however you're going to do it, you want the people to have the books a few weeks before the first session. That's key if you're the organizer. You need to do that. Make sure they get it. Um, and maybe you could have it that they pick it up after church, like they order after Mass, let you know that they are coming to the session or whatever. And maybe you could just have the books out with people's names on it and, you know, have a little table after Mass, a little post-it with people's names on the book and they pick it up on their way out of mass um, a couple weeks before. It does let you know reading part one will help form discussion and participation in part two. However, the activities are not dependent upon anything in part one. It is just as helpful for the participants to show up at the session, join in the activities, and then take the book home to read part one to reinforce what they learned in part two. What that is letting you know, friends, then is Part one, it sounds like it's going to be the homework part, but it's okay if you haven't done it, show up for the part two activities anyway. Again, that's a key note in a study to know that. So if you do the activities first and then you go home and read the lesson, that's okay. It's also okay if you read ahead, come and do the activities, go back home and read it to reinforce. In other words, pick whatever order you choose but do try to complete both parts to get the maximum benefit and education on this most important topic. However you engage with the content, either on your own or with a group, or in whatever order you choose, I pray that it will serve you well and draw you closer to God. So if you didn't hear that, friends, this book is not just about body image or using Catholic teaching to help you live a healthier life. This is here to help you draw closer to God. God. That is the point in all this. Draw closer to God. You're going to take your broom. If you've wondered why this is here, partially is I'm on a screen and porch and I have to sweep the steps. The other part is it reminds me of, um, it's probably from the Psalms, but Brothers Isaiah song where you sweep, sweep, sweep out your soul. That was awkward. Body image. Obviously, I'm not super worried about things. <laughs> It's okay. A little humility is always good. I'm just gonna... Should we just flip? Let's look at something. Surprisingly, research on women in less advanced cultures has shown signs of body dysfunction as well, but in different ways than we are accustomed. I'm on page 22, friends. Right there, I've never heard or thought about that. You know, they always say that people in other countries, you know... They, they don't have any issues. Doesn't seem to be true here. In most poor countries, thinness is equated to poverty, malnutrition, and disease, and not seen as advantageous in other ways. Plumpness in many of those same regions of the world signals wealth, health, and prosperity. Huh. <laughs> okay, this book is deep. I was not expecting that. That was page 22, top of page 22. I'm going to put a little bookmark in there so I can find it again. We're going to flip back to an activity. Okay, well, the index is done pretty easy. You could literally write in the book. We all know I'm not going to do that. I'll get a piece of paper and number that and do my little survey, write my numbers down. Um, word association. What are your first thoughts when you see the following terms? Fat, pretty, slim, thin. Start writing them. Um, there's a lot more than that. Rusty got so excited. There's even, write down an outfit and how it makes you feel. You're going to look at this in a variety of new ways, friends. I'm very excited for this book. I may, may try and form a group to look at this. God bless you.